appreciate, Watson, that the mystery surrounding the manor house and its new occupants was now beginning to deepen. Consider the facts. A peddler who claimed that he had been made unusually welcome at the house has been found dead in a hut in the neighbouring woods. On the wall, he has scrawled a cryptic last message. And nearby are the clearly discernible tracks of what would appear to be a three-legged retriever dog. At the house, they deny ever having received this peddler. And now I, who but a few days ago was unceremoniously chased from the grounds, find myself amongst a family party invited to the house for tea. As you may well imagine, I determined to make good use of this unexpected opportunity. We would have extended an invitation long before this, Mrs. Holmes, but I'm afraid I'm... I'm unable to entertain as much as I would wish. My wife suffers from poor health, alas. The Indian climate didn't suit her at all. I do hope, Mrs. Turnbull, that today will not prove too much for you. Oh, no. It does me good now and again to, to see new faces. We felt we should take an early opportunity of meeting you, Mr. Holmes. After all, we have, I'm told, albeit unintentionally, usurped your position in the neighbourhood. We were both so sorry to hear of your, your parents' misfortune. Oh, we don't talk about it, do we, Sherlock? No. The dear boy was mortally hurt, of course, but Brother Gideon and I have done our very best to ease the pain. We've quite taken him to our hearts, haven't we, Brother Gideon? Oh, indeed. In, indeed, right to our hearts. Sherlock knows that he always has a good, loving and Christian home with us. Oh, indeed. Indeed, I'm, I'm full of love. The dear boy. Uh, Jasper, my young nephew Jasper Moran, and uh, Captain Chumley, who's on attachment with our local garrison at Fullwood Barracks. I do apologise for being late. We were delayed on the road, I'm afraid. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce uh, Mrs. Holmes and family. Uh, Jasper's at university. He's staying with us until his brother Sebastian gets back from India in a few weeks' time. He's in the army out there. It uh, runs in the family, you see. Which is why I have no compunction whatever in regularly approaching the colonel for subscriptions to military charities. <laughs> oh, he pesters me constantly. I have a cousin in the service. You are most welcome to approach me at any time, Captain. Any, any time at all. Ah, uh, my card. We've met before. Yes, I know. So sorry I set the dog on you. I thought you were one of the village lads prying around up here. We are plagued by poachers. You must be. If they come in broad daylight with portmanteau in their hands. A fair point. Jasper can be a little over-hasty at times. Sherlock had no right to be there. Oh, no, no, no right at all. I said so. I said so at the time. I said, I said, you have no right to be there. I'm very well versed in the laws of trespass. <laughs> the law is my profession, Colonel. Yeah. Perhaps I might leave you my car. <laughs> Perhaps Charity would like to perform that little piano forte piece she promised us? I say, that sounds a splendid idea. Then perhaps, Chumley, you might escort the young lady to the piano forte yourself. Charmed. Uh, you won't mind, I hope, Mrs. Turnbull, if I replenish my plate. <laughs> Only having been brought up never to waste God's good time, I endeavour, whenever possible, uh, to replenish mind and body simultaneously. Absent friends. I shall begin again. Absent friends. She says she can play the piano better than I can play the violin. Well, can she? When the hands in prayer are raised for the dear ones at our side. Well, Charlotte. What news of the Holmeses across the channel? 
Not good. They are apparently not even contemplating a return to this country in the foreseeable future. As far as his grandmother knows, they are still intent upon continuing their travels. And what then is to happen to Sherlock, should they do so? It would appear that he's to stay where he is. <laughs> and are we supposed to tell him that? Are we to show him the letter or anything? His grandmother says that she will leave that decision to my own good judgment. Poor Sherlock. you who discovered the body of that tramp in the woods. He was not a tramp, he was a running patterer. I'm afraid I wouldn't know the difference. Ah, well, I would, you see. I find all people fascinating, regardless of their station in life. You might say I make a study of human behaviour. Do you now? And tell me, do you really find that sort of human behaviour worthy of serious study? Infinitely. Does the name Professor James Moriarty mean anything to you? Not a thing, should it? He only happens to be, among other things, the world's greatest living authority on the binomial theorem. I have the honour of studying under him. Have you? And tell me, do you find the binomial theorem a subject worthy of serious study? I would have thought it self-evident, Mr Holmes, that a theorem devised by Sir Isaac Newton and made subject to a treatise by Professor Moriarty was worthy of anyone's serious study. <clears throat> Perhaps you should consider devoting some of your own time to glancing at it. Though I must warn you, it is somewhat more difficult to master than patterers can't. Do you dance? Yes, but never at tea time. I dance. <laughs> Almost as well as she plays the piano. Well, the nice little fellow he is. I'm afraid... He is a she, Mr. Holmes. Oh, very well. What a nice little fellow she is. <laughs> Neatly turned, sir. You have more dogs out there, I perceive, Colonel. Yes. You must have a lot of dogs. No, just the three. Those two out there and my wife's spaniel. Not like in India. <laughs> oh, my uh, coach has returned for you, Mrs. Holmes. Well, hasn't the afternoon flown? Tempus. He ducks rare room, Colonel. <laughs> Time, the devourer of things. <laughs> Come along, Brother Gideon. <laughs> so, John, why is Colonel Turnbull concealing a dog? What do you mean? Well, he admits to having three dogs. A wolfhound, a spaniel, which is his wife's lapdog, and his own gun dog, a red setter. Yet unless I am very much mistaken, this hair, which I took the opportunity of removing from the clothing of Mrs. Turnbull, will, under your microscope, prove to belong to a black Labrador retriever. Good God, young and how do you know that? Because Newbugs pointed out to me that the tracks about the hut are those of a retriever. Now, I noticed similar tracks on the ground about the manor house. Therefore, there is, somewhere, a retriever. And as the wolfhound is grey, the spaniel is brown and the setter is red, a process of deduction indicates that the black hair is from the dog I did not see. In other words, the retriever. Hence it would appear, for some reason, the colonel is concealing a black Labrador retriever. Why? He's too jolly clever by half. Furthermore, <laughs> I think you will find that this hair is from the same black dog. And where does this one come from? from Natty Dan's trouser leg. I took it the other morning. But there's something else. Oh, he doesn't let up, does he? According to Grimshaw, the people at the manor house sent Natty packing. Which sounds reasonable enough to me. Maybe. Yet I noticed this sign chalked by the door at the house. Hieroglyphics. If you like. It is the patterer's symbol for those which follow which indicates a good house. 
bone in their language. Now, Natty might lie to us, but why would he lie to his friends on the road? Why, indeed. I admit that that is curious. But you don't know for sure that Natty Dan made that sign. It's purely circumstantial evidence. And as Henry Thoreau has written Dr. Sarbutz, some circumstantial evidence can be very strong, as when you find a trout in the milk. <laughs> <laughs> so where does this lead you? Well, they invite him in, yet turn me off in no uncertain manner. Can it be that they are interested only in itinerants, in people who pass through and are unlikely to be missed should anything happen to them? Was old Mo one such? an old woman. <laughs> Lucky I didn't meet you in the street, young and I might have swept you up and eloped with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we know now that their interest does not extend to all itinerants. <laughs> so what was so special about Natty Dan? You know, I think I shall write to my brother Mycroft in London. Indeed, I may even take the opportunity of going down to see him. I can lay all the facts before him and see what he makes of them. He's infinitely more clever at such things than I am. I'm afraid, Sherlock, that your brother is not in London. Oh, yes, he works there now, somewhere in Whitehall. Yes, but at the moment he happens to be in France. This letter came from your grandmother. She and I became quite close to each other when she was over here last. We could speak French to each other, you see. Dear Grandmama, well, she never would stay in England very long. She missed her beloved France too much. When I was younger, we used occasionally to go and stay with her. She taught me to love France almost as much as she does. And now here I am, the only member of the family, not there. Oh, don't worry, Sherlock. The time will come. Meanwhile, you have friends enough here. Oh, it doesn't bother me, John. I'm not one for close personal relationships. Give me work, give me problems, and I'm happy enough. Incidentally, your grandmother sent you these. Golden sovereigns. I shall be able to buy a magnifying lens. <laughs> well, it may help me to distinguish the wood from the trees. You may argue, Jasper, but there was no call to manhandle that old woman. Well, we could have turned her away quite quietly. Oh. What's it matter? Why chance your arm? We had none of this business till you arrived, setting dogs on people, manhandling people. Hold your tongue! People who pry about up here must be got rid of. I'm not disputing that fact. I simply suggest that you be a little more circumspect. Hmm. Well, I'd really like to see the back of. Is that boy Holmes? Uh, he might be really dangerous. He's too inquisitive. He could wreck our plans. Well, there, I agree with you. Where is everybody? They all went out in the carriage, sir. No, oh, that was hours ago. They have not yet returned. But the gypsy man is here again. He has another body. Oh, we don't want any more. Are well, you tell him we don't want any more. We have enough. Savvy? Oh. Yes, sir.
just clear off, you good-for-nothing little varmint. Master Sherlock is not here. A body, Mrs. Another body. Another body in the woods. It's here, it's here. There, look, there. It's all right, now just stand aside. Let the dog see the rabbit. Good heavens, sir. It's that boy Holmes. What? It simply will not do, Sergeant. Where is the obsequial eloquence in good heavens it's that boy Holmes? What in heaven's name are you playing at? Oh, no, you don't. It's taken the pair of you to rig up this little trick, and that's a certainty. No, Sergeant, I do assure you, he had no part whatsoever in my little deception. I'll show you what he found. Here, Sergeant, is your body. It's a showman's dummy. Well, is this what you brought us out here for? I didn't know, sir. I thought it were a stiff one. Honest. Simple lost or stolen, by the looks of it. All right, lad, I'll take charge of that. Give it to me. Come on, over here. OK, I've got it. Right. Goodbye, Sergeant. All right. Well, cheer up, John. You should be delighted that I am, after all, still in the land of the living. To be perfectly truthful at this precise moment, I'm not altogether certain that I am. Stupid prank boy. Infantile. Ghoulish. And infantile. And not funny. Precisely what I told the boy last night, Brother Gideon. When he came home, late, all covered in mud and leaves. Totally irresponsible. My words, exactly. But you should show so little consideration for others, Sherlock. Upsetting that Dr Whitney. And obstructing Sergeant Grimshaw. I'm very sorry, Aunt Rachel. But I would never have told you but for the fact that I considered that honesty would, in this house, be the best policy. That's indeed it is, boy. Mm. Um, indeed it is. And was. And never shall be. We are none of us, I hope. <laughs> Implying that you were wrong to tell the truth, Sherlock. My dear, you were, of course, perfectly right. Oh, indeed. And we credit where credit is due. Not said. As a matter of fact, boy, I can throw some light on this dummy of you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It was stolen in Garstang. Really? But why? <laughs> I should have thought it was obvious, boy. <laughs> Even to you. Whoever took it wanted the clothes and discarded the dummy. I see. The dummy had its clothes on, you see. <laughs> well, they'll be fit for nothing by now. <laughs> <laughs> on the contrary, they're perfect. The shoes are highly polished, the trousers immaculately pressed. Trousers? Trousers, tailcoat, full evening dress. Well, in that case, it's not the same dummy. The one that was stolen from Garstang six months ago was the figure of a woman. In that case, I haven't the foggiest notion. Excuse me, Mum. Uh, Sergeant Grimshaw's here to see Mr Sherlock. Now you're for it. At this hour... Is the man mad? Sit down, Sherlock. Mrs. Cunliffe shall tell Sergeant Grimshaw. He may wait in the kitchen until you're ready. Yes, Mum. Finish your breakfast, Sherlock. And don't rush it. Sergeant Grimshaw will wait. That looks in a especially mouth-watering pie, Mrs. Cunliffe. It, could it by any chance be rabbit? Yes, it could. And they was come by, quite honestly. Oh, I don't doubt it, Mrs Cunliffe. I don't doubt oh. it. You know, when I was in Barnsley, before I come here, there was a dear good lady made rabbit pies that were out of this world. 
Aye, many's the evening. That dear lady and I have sat before the range and, and shared one. Well, you needn't think you're going to share this one. Ah, uh, Mr. Holmes, it's uh, about the death of that uh, peddler chap I come. Natty Dan. Aye, um, and we've had no luck whatever with the, that last message of his, that hay bag, old Mo. Our uh, inquiries have revealed no trace of a woman or anybody with a name even vaguely resembling old Mo. And this, you see, poses a bit of a problem. Really? How's that? Well, if we can find no relatives, nor no one to come forward, he's to be buried on the parish, and they don't like that. It costs money. So, um, I was wondering whether you might have any information. Are you asking for my help? I'm advising you against withholding information, Mr. Holmes. I have none. You're quite sure of that? I'm absolutely certain. Yeah, well, we shall see. Perhaps you should ask up at the manor house. I don't quite follow you. In which case, Sergeant, we are left with no alternative... Aye. ...but to follow our separate courses. Sergeant. Opinionated young boy. I do wish you'd stop drinking that stuff. Very well. I can take it or leave it, General. <laughs> Turn to the tension. We're getting close, aren't we? All the more reason not to make silly mistakes. Meaning? Turning that dummy away, for one thing. That was an extraordinarily silly mistake. Not half so silly as inviting that peddler fella in. That brought the police sniffing about up here. The peddler provided us with invaluable information which we could have acquired in no other way. <laughs> and anyway, there wasn't the slightest risk involved. Or wouldn't have been. Had you not been drinking this stuff and allowed that damn dog to escape? Now, you listen to me, you cocky little whippersnapper. Oh, do stop arguing, the two of you. You're getting on my nerves. <laughs> so we're getting on madame's nerves, are we? Well, madame shouldn't be lolling about down here listening to us. Madame should be back up at work. Work? You talk to me of work. I do more work than any of you. I work from morn till night, day in, day out, and have done all these months. It's all work, nothing but work. Work, 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 until I think I go clear out of my mind. You damn fool. Now see what you've done. Drunk or sober, you are a brainless menace. I will not tolerate such unseemly behaviour. You will compose yourselves, and you will return to your work immediately. Yes, well, I... Mrs. Turnbull gives me cause for concern. A strain appears to be telling, and she we cannot risk. I suggest you summon the professor to re-inspire her. Very well. Sir, I shall see to it. Thank you.